Hi, and welcome back. <laughs> Today's class, we're gonna focus on hips and hamstrings, a little bit of shoulders too. It's gonna feel pretty good. All right, so let's get started. For today's class, you might want to have a strap and a block or two. Could come in handy. If you don't have a strap, just use your imagination. You could use all kinds of other things, like a t-shirt or a belt. Okay, so we're going to start off lying on the back. We're going to do a couple of supine stretches. Now, lying down on the back is going to be the easiest to feel the stretch in the right place because we have gravity is on our side. Gravity can help us to ground and release everywhere else. So um, the first thing that I'm going to have you do is flatten your lower back down into the ground and reach your chin away from your chest. And then as you inhale, arch your lower back and reach, tuck the chin like you're making a double chin, chin into the chest. Inhale. Lower back flat, chin reaches away. Exhale. Then come into neutral with your lower back and your chin. Now let me see if you can maintain your neutral curves and take your right leg straight up in the air. And then wave it like you just don't, no, uh, that would be a hip hop concert. And instead, we're just going to hold the leg straight up and try to maintain that. Now, you might say, um, I'm stuck right here and I'm shaking. That's okay. That's just your nerve tension. And one day, maybe, with the regular practice, you start to get here. But I just want you to observe what you can do with your own body without an outside force. Let's try the other leg. Okay. And then we're going to warm up these hip flexors and hamstrings a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is a little bridge lift. Press your heels into the ground, contract your hammies, and then tip your pelvis up. But lift from the butt. Think of your butt lifting you up. Reach your knees away from you. Lower your butt down. And lift up. Lift up the butt, reach the knees away. Contract right here where the hamstring meets up into the butt. Keep your knees pointing straight ahead, lower down. If your knees tend to go out, then keep a block in between your knees. Lift back up. Contract, lower back down. Last one, lift back up, contract, lower back down. Then slide just your right leg out along the ground. Reach to your inner foot, deep in the thigh bone, let it reach towards the ground, and rebend. Two more, slide out the leg. Deepen the thigh, rib cage down, and rebend. Last one, just warming up the quadriceps, the hamstrings here, getting a little hip love. Slowly restraighten and change sides. So as you're stretching that leg out, keep it on a track and keep your big toe pointed up. Two more times. rest of the body is doing mountain pose. I mean, except this leg. This is doing a bent leg thing. Good. Now, for the fun part, we're going to stretch the right leg straight up and then see if you can lower the leg without your middle lifting and then bring it up. And lower. If you wanted to make this a little more abdominal fun, you could do this from a crunch position, like so. I prefer to just chill though. Your abs are going to work whether you're up or down, but change legs.
All right, now we're all gonna try it from the crunched up position. So now hands behind your head, roll yourself up. And we're gonna do those two exercises from the crunched up position. So now bring your right knee to your chest, fingertips lightly hold the shin, reach your left leg forward and down. And change. Stretch your buttocks away from your lower back and your back ribs back. And change. And change. Bring the right leg back in like how we started and then see if you can stretch the leg towards straight. Do it less straight if you got the super tight hamstrings, all the way straight if you can. And then change. Now I'm not grabbing the leg, but just lightly touching and reaching up. Descend your rib cage, sternum. Good. Now bring your right leg up. And now we're going to do the passive stretch. Take your leg straight up in the strap and slide your leg out. Now, for the less flexible hamstring people, I'm going to recommend to put this to go in like a doorway and just put this against the wall. And then this might be your stretch. This might be your stretch. Go to where you feel that the hip crease can drop down and relax and your hamstrings can stretch. You shouldn't feel that your leg is fighting you. So I normally say like on a scale of one to 10, be at a five on this. I want you to even be a little bit less, go for a four on the sensation scale. Then bring your leg over to the left or if you're in the doorway, angle your body and torso so that you can have this little angle going on. And open your arm out to the side. You won't have the advantage of holding the foot in the strap at the doorway, but you know, you're getting the good stretch that other, either way. Now to really make lasting flexibility changes in the body, we want to have a practice in our regular routine that allows you to hold these stretches for up to two minutes. So we're working a minute hold in each position on the back, and then we're gonna throw in another minute standing to hopefully give you that longer time so that your nervous system can adapt to it. Really with stretching, it's you're training your response to become more flex, to become more comfortable with the new range of flexibility. Come back to center and change sides. So there isn't uh, necessarily some type of um, Well, there can be a structural limitation, like for example, based on how your femur fits into your hip, the type of situation you have with your hip, your pelvis, and your femur. But for the most part, when people say like, oh, I just have like really short hamstrings, I could never, well, if you're like under anesthesia where, you're, where your nervous system is completely uh, relaxed, and someone were to move your body, they'd have to be so careful not to uh, uh, move it so deep that they'd rip you out of the socket because your body would move any way that they wanted it to. So this limitation of me saying, oh, this is too much, that's really just my own head and my nervous system. So we train ourselves slowly so that we can relax into the new range so that we don't tighten up and pull on something that's not good, like an attachment, etc. Bring the leg over to the side now if you're in the strap or angle yourself throughout the wall. Now 
Now what is real is if you generate force into a joint, your body's ability to withstand force by gradually strengthening in a lengthened position, for, for example. So if you're in a lengthened position and then you add force to it, for example, you're in a standing pose and you try to stretch your hamstrings too far or a weighted pose, like you're trying to do the splits, you can definitely tear that way. So that's a little bit different. As you're holding this position, let your hip drop down and away from you. Feel your spine like it can decompress along the ground. All right, one more set of supine stretches before we get up. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and gently hug in. Release that and change the cross of your legs. And then also your hamstrings are not in a vacuum. There's stuff that connects to them. So for example, if the sole of your foot is very tight or your hamstrings, when you go to fold forward, that's all going to pull on the tissues because of the fascia that connects. Same with your hips and your glutes. So by stretching out the hips, the piriformis, and the glutes, you'll feel that you have more access into your hamstrings. Getting your body more comfortable in the, new, the newly desired range. All right, then uncross. And for a sec, let's just see. Oh yeah, look at all that now. That's pretty good. If you're having to stretch out all those things. Okay, now roll yourself up to seated. And let's come into a downward facing dog where we're going to eventually step through and come into Parsva Tanas. I'm getting ahead of myself. Stretch back into down dog. And then step your right foot up to your right thumb. Set up your back foot for Parsva Tanasana. Now here is where I'd have many people with their hands on a chair seat against a wall. In this case, I'm using a couple of blocks because I don't have a wall right near. I guess I would go over to that wall, but we have to rearrange everything at this point. But really at home, I like to practice this against the wall and get this hip crease to release back and everything to release and lengthen. But I've already done a couple of videos to be honest. So I'm feeling pretty open already. So I feel like I can go to right here already, but you should just know that there's no, uh, I'm being honest with you is that it took a, a little bit of finessing to get this opening. If I was at home, I would do it against the wall for the first part. All right, then change sides. So get enough lift that you can roll your hip bone up, release your hip crease back. as opposed to just dumping into yourself or rounding. All 
All right, then step forward, Uttanasana. And again, this can be arms crossed on a chair seat, hands onto blocks, hands onto the floor, whatever feels like it helps you to release. And then come up to stand. Adjust the shorts and stand tall. Let's go through a little flow together. Inhale your arms up. Exhale to fold. And just notice how your hamstrings feel. The ability to, oh yeah, that's good. Inhale, flat back. Step left leg back and lower your knee. Inhale, your arms up. Exhale, cactus arms. Inhale, back up. Hands down, step to down dog. Inhale, your left leg up. Knee to chest, step your foot, drop your back knee. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to cactus arms. Inhale back up. Hands down. Step forward, Uttanasana. Press into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale the arms to your side. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step the right leg back. Drop your knee and inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus arms. Inhale, back up. Hands down, stretch back, downward dog. Inhale, your right leg up. Exhale, knee to chest, step your foot, drop your back knee. Inhale, raise your arms. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, reach up. Hands down, step forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, Samastiti. Sit back into chair pose. Cross your left leg up and over your right. Cross your left elbow under your right. If you aren't able to do the double cross of the arms, you can just take one arm under and cross the other arm over. Uncross your arms and your legs. Should have gone with the longer shorts, geez. Inhale into chair pose, arms forward. Cross your right leg up and over. Cross your right arm under. Uncross and stand in mountain. Then bring your left heel up onto the inside of your right thigh. 
a little balance challenge going here. Hands to prayer. Interlock your fingers, right index finger on top. Turn your palms inside out and reach up. Bring your arms back down, lower your leg down, change legs. Bring your right heel up onto the inside of your left thigh. Interlock your fingers, other index finger on top. Turn the palms inside out and raise your arms. Bring your arms down and lower your leg down. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back into downward dog or take a vinyasa. Then lie down onto your belly. Clasp your hands behind your back. Now, ideally, I would have everyone clasp their hands behind their back. In the ideal world, you'd be able to get full external rotation without locking your elbows. You'd be able to lift your hands and reach them back. But you can see for shoulders like mine, because of all the surfing I do, once I interlock my hands to get the rotation I want, my elbows have to bend. If I try to straighten my arms, you can see, look how my shoulders turn in on my chest. So I just use a little bit of space with the strap. So um, yeah, that helps me out. And uh, you can do the same if, you, if you're observing that you have the tight shoulders. Now, what we're trying to do here is to separate the glenohumeral from the rib cage. So my, sh my upper arm bone and shoulder should be able to rotate independently of my rib cage pushing. You can see the difference. This is me pushing and going into extension. This is me rotating my shoulder. So I want you to stay in this neutral position. Look how I slide my rib cage to my pelvis and I slide my front hip bones to my rib cage, a little butt squeeze, and then I'm gonna to try to rotate and lift up. Okay, see if you can do that at home. So we're training this shoulder to get health independent of the rest of the body moving. That will help with the tissues in the shoulder and the rotator cuff. Now, eventually, we want to be able to do extension with this too. So let's see, could you grip your butt down so that your lumbar has space and lift your legs up an inch? And then start to roll your heart forward too. Keep a little chin tuck. Then lower yourself down, rest your cheek on your mat. I felt nice. Okay, now, if you have the really flexible quadriceps, you might be able to reach back and catch your feet. If you have to do all kinds of violence to your body, then you can just take the strap around your feet and pretend like you're holding your feet. Look at that. In any case, whatever you're holding, feet or straps, you wanna first do that little rib cage action, pelvis action, and make sure that you have the rotation in your shoulders that you're looking for. Then once you have that, you might be able to start to roll into extension. Move the buttocks down. It's a little easier when you hold your feet. Oh, I don't get as much space though as when I'm holding the strap in my lower back. Look at that. Who would have thunk? This is kind of nice actually with the strap. Oh, yeah. You don't know what you're missing with this. You got to get the strap at home. Come on. Just, just get it. 
You're only going to need one for the rest of your life. You could do it. Lower yourself down, rest the other cheek. All right, it's up dog time. Stretch it. Downward dog, stretch back. All right, one of my favorite hip stretch twist combinations, Artem Matsyandrasan. So you've seen this one. This is, what, this is what you do when you get sort of a little hip stretch in. You do a little of this number, but we can add a little stretch here. But the primary movement that I want you to focus is this hugging in and lengthening. So don't worry so much about the twist as much as you're worrying about stretching this baby over here. You know, you know what I'm talking about? If you're not feeling much stretch in this position, then you can do pigeon pose instead, or try not to smoke so much more pot before you do the class and then <laughs> you'll feel, no, I'm just kidding. I know you didn't do that. But uh, yeah, see if you can get the sensation here. If you're super flexible, you might be like, I'm not feeling much, then you just do the pigeon. Feel that. Okay, change sides. Not as much in this one. Yeah, you might be a pigeon candidate. So you just gotta feel what you're working with. All right, now traditionally this next posture was done with uh, a heel underneath the butt. So you'd sit on your heel and then cross your knees, but that could be a little gnarly on ankles and knee situations, depending on what you got going on. So I like either like a little blanket folded underneath me. I feel like a block is a little too high, but you can feel what works best for you. Look at the little blanket. All right, now I can just see the comments flooding in. Could you have told us what to get before the class? So we have, I know, I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget what we're gonna do. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the sweet spot right there with the little blanket. Okay, then we're gonna get the shoulder stretch too. So I got my right knee up. I'm gonna go right arm up too. Now let's try, let's do the right arm from under today. Right arm from under left arm from above, and you can grab fingers or my less flexible friends can use the strap or t-shirt or whatever you got. Now this top arm, you wanna rotate from the outer arm forward. So you get going into the external rotation, the elbows coming forward and then see if you can release the skin from the upper trapezius so that the upper trapezius widens. Don't let your rib cage jump forward to do the stretch that your shoulder should be doing. and then release that. And we'll change the crossage of the legs. And we gotta change the cross of the arms as well.
and release that. Sit with your legs crossed for a moment, with your eyes closed. Take three conscious breaths. Notice how calm you feel in your body. Notice how open the body feels, the energy channels. Been activated, open, cleansed. Then bring your palms together. Thank you. Namaste. If you got time now, lie down on your back for a few minutes in your final meditation. And then when you're done, hit that like button, will you? And uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you felt that your hamstrings were better opened up after. Could you feel what I was talking about with all that opening going on? Let me know. I'll see you next time.